Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Lab 9 of CAD 1133 and CAD 2131. This is going to be our final lab of the semester. Uh, the remainder of our time is going to be spent doing, doing uh, work for our project as well as our final evaluation in uh, week 14. Uh, that said, um, we do have a few things that I want to cover still uh, that are going to be essential for your uh, work over over the next couple of years in uh, in other classes. Okay, uh, one of the things that we want to talk about is uh, advanced simulations, as well as I want to show you how to customize your uh, template file for for Proteus. All right, so let's jump into it. Okay, the first thing that I want to draw your attention to is the title block down in the bottom right hand corner of Proteus and uh, the default is a little bit clumsy and, and it, it's quite congested, especially with the file path. And uh, you'll notice that in, in this example, I actually have a little Durham College logo. And to me, it looks uh, so much more professional and so much cleaner and finished. So I'd like to show you how to do that. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start by going to the uh, master sheet. Okay, so let me let me jump in here. And so how we get to our master sheet is what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to a template, go to master sheet. And uh, this is the master sheet. Anything that you do here uh, is going to get replicated across all of your other sheets. And so, uh, for example, um, this path, right? I, I'm, having, I'm having some difficulty with this because it looks horrible. So what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to decompose it. And we can, we can do lots of things with this. Uh, for example, uh, we can change, um, we can change its location. We can get rid of it. We can, we can do, uh, modify it to a certain extent, but, uh, at the end of the day, these strings are set. There's a set, a number of them and, uh, they are case sensitive and limited in their scope. So uh, I'm going to circle back around to all of the things that you can put in for now and just simply uh, delete the path. For example, I don't really care about this. Um, now, the, if we look under uh, design and our design properties, you notice that there is a title. Uh, in this case, we'll call it uh, What did I call it here? Go capstone and we'll make sure that we have the author in there. Okay, so we've, we've filled everything in. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, we show this this properly, and so, uh, for example, here instead of path, uh, let's let's actually put in here a sheet. Sheet. So this is the master sheet. It's capstone. Uh, it's the the file name is twenty twenty project v one, <clears throat> and the revision is one point five, and the author and and we're looking fairly reasonable. And let's say we can also add in some 2D graphics. Okay, so there we go. A little bit different, but uh, good enough. All right, I'm then going to highlight this. I'll uh, right click and I can actually uh, make this a uh, symbol. If we want, here we go, I'll make this a device symbol and I'll call this uh, DC uh, title.
good enough. So we have our conventional header and we have our DC header. And when we're finished, uh, if we go back here uh, real quick to say the processor, notice that it updates everything. So this is sheet processor and everything gets filled in nicely. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to template. We're going to save uh, design as a template and we're going to save this as DC uh, a size. Uh, and what this will do for us is the next time we want to actually create a new uh, project, one of the things that we can do is pull in this new, uh, new, new file. Okay. So uh, good enough, good enough, good enough. Notice that it is all updated with uh, our logo and uh, is much, much cleaner in my opinion. Okay, so there are some advanced uh, simulation features available to you in Proteus. And the one that you're going to utilize the most is your graph-based simulations. And so uh, you may be asking yourself, why would I want to bother with a graph-based simulation when I have the oscilloscope? And the issue with the oscilloscope is that it's actually operating in real time. And some, some events happen too quickly or too slowly for you to get a good picture of what's happening as well as uh, there are a lot of different types of graph-based simulations available to you. And so you may be looking at transient responses or... or, or um, and today we're just going to look at a very simple analog uh, simulation uh, graph. And the idea is to, to, to get you started in thinking about uh, what, what uh, is available. Okay. And so... I'll get you to, uh, let's build up this little circuit here. This is called a valley fill circuit. This is something that uh, I ran across a couple of years ago and uh, it's brilliant in how it works. And I'll describe a little bit about it uh, because um, it answers a, a problem that we've run into in the recent years. And so I'll get you to get started on this and I will continue to to uh, talk about what's magical about uh, the valley fill circuit. So as LED lights have become more and more prevalent, uh, one of the issues has become that, uh, that we have an issue with capacitance on our AC circuits. In the uh, old days, we had a lot of inductive loads and they, they, caused, they caused one problem. And, and the problem is that uh, as you uh, introduce uh, capacitance or or inductance into into an AC circuit, you start to shift the current out of phase with the voltage, and so large industrial applications would have these huge motors uh, that would actually shift the, the 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 current out of phase with the voltage, and you would have uh, problems with uh, transformers and transmission lines, and more importantly, the the, the billing. And so the answer to this was to add fairly large uh, capacitors onto the motors to uh, compensate for this, this uh, reactive inductance. So now we have uh, LEDs everywhere. We have the opposite problem. Uh, the easiest way to create a, a DC circuit is uh, with a rectifier and a big capacitor on there. But if you imagine that every light out there it has uh, a whack of uh, capacitors on it, then we end up with this capacitive reactance problem. And so they have, uh, they've had for quite some time a standard around uh, power correction factors or PCFs. And your LEDs uh, now have to fall within this PCF uh, specification. And so what, what this circuit does is actually uh, takes two capacitors and puts them in series. Okay, so positive and the negative comes down through this small resistor uh, to this capacitor and it charges up uh, the capacitor in series. And as you remember from uh, electricity, uh, if I put two capacitors in series, uh, basically the volt, the induct, uh, the capacitance is, is divided. So it's, it's the same as a, parallel resistors, but in this case, series capacitors. So instead of being, uh, it's seeing 47 uh, microfarads, it's going to see a 23 and a half microfarads 
uh, but the voltage is going to be a uh, half of whatever uh, our, our voltage at, uh, at, at these two nodes are. Okay, so the voltage will be divided between them. Once the voltage drops, however, this, this diode, which was in forward bias, now becomes in reverse bias, okay? And we're able to, uh, in essence, put these two capacitors in parallel. So it's in series while charging and in parallel while discharging. And what that allows us to do is basically uh, offload a lot of current okay, when discharging and a lot of voltage when charging. Uh, so there's advantages and disadvantages to this. Obviously, uh, we still have our large peak coming in here to our voltage regulator, uh, but we're able to provide much more current at the bottom end where you have a lot of valley valley to fill in, okay? So once you get this uh, finished, we're actually going to, uh, to, to run it. So let's, uh, let's create a graph, okay? So we're going to go over here to uh, graph mode. We're gonna create an analog graph and we're going to place uh, our voltage and our current probes. Okay, so here I've created my circuit. Uh, note that the uh, resistance value needs to be fairly low on, on our uh, resistor here. And I've created uh, some measurement points, things that I'm interested in. And so these measurement points I'm interested in is the, so I'm, look, I'm looking at what's the voltage coming into the regulator, voltage going into my load resistor, uh, the current coming out of the bridge rectifier, and the current going into the load resistor. So the next thing is to uh, actually create our, our analog graph, like so. And what I'll do is I'll highlight the probe, I'll grab the, the, uh, either the probe or the little symbol and pull it over. One thing you don't wanna grab is the, the label itself. If you grab the label, it, it'll only move the label. We're not interested in that. So here's my two currents. So I have current in and current out basically. And I'll also do the same with the voltages, but instead of putting it on this side, I'll put it on the other axes. Okay, so I'm able to measure the uh, voltage versus the current and take a look at uh, what's happening there. Now, the next thing is to uh, edit the, the graph itself. So we can either uh, double click on it or you can right click and uh, select edit uh, graph. 
And what we're interested in here is we want to change this to uh, say 100 millis milliseconds of a sample, and then we can simulate it. And uh, this tells me a lot looking at it. I, I apologize for the blue on black. Uh, there's not much I can do about that right now, uh, but I'm going to double click on the, the top header here, make it full screen for us. And so if you recall, C1 uh, plus is our current coming in. And so we have about half an amp coming in and it comes down, settles out and then drops to zero. Okay. And this is basically charging those capacitors and then discharging it. If we look at the other current, which is in red, we come up to our hundred milliamps and then we, we flatten right out. I mean, it's, it's, it's as good as you're going to get. The voltage coming in, uh, the blue would be our, our, our uh, rectified. And you can see that uh, it's looking like a rectified AC signal until we get to half of our input voltage. So we're about 18, uh, just under, uh, so call it 18, half of that would be about nine. Uh, so we're turning on uh, basically here to start to fill in that extra current. And our output voltage is rock solid at 3.3 volts. So this is this is a this is a this is quite a good circuit for us. If, however, we were to change this from 10 milli ohms to 10 ohms and run the simulation again, uh, we get we get something similar, but it starts to change the the uh, current uh, profile here, and that's not a bad thing. It's just going to slow down how quickly it charges. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's take a look at what this would look like. However, if we didn't have uh, our our valley fill, if we actually just took that capa 100 microfarad capacitor and simulated that, and you'll notice that uh, we get we get really spiky, right? So we still have a fairly good voltage uh, coming into into the regulator, okay? Uh, but uh, we're sp we're spiking way up here at uh, 800 milliamps, which is significantly more. And the problem is that every time we, we hit it, we're hitting it with uh, these really high current spikes. And those, those will uh, kill your capacitor rather quickly, as well as create a lot of noise upstream because the capacitor, when it's charging like this, is seen as uh as as a as a short and so the higher that current the more uh radiation it's going to give off and so yeah we need to we need to be aware of that and and if we were to say uh increase this to 200 microfarads you're going to see that it gets even worse okay so that initial spike is now way up at 1.6 amps Okay, so um, if we had a fuse on this little guy, uh, it's going to have to be rated to handle that that short impulse of very high current. Okay, so that that's that's what the valley fill circuit is, and hopefully you can see how using the graph based simulation really helps us understand uh, more than just just what the oscilloscope could could show us. It's able to show us uh, the current in multiple locations, the voltage in multiple locations, and a very easy way to uh, to run uh, a very quick uh, analysis, if you would, of, of the circuit. And so what what would happen if we were to uh, put put my circuit back together here and try to run it on the oscilloscope? So here we go. We've got it put back together and we're going to grab the oscilloscope. And we simply look at the uh, voltage, voltage in and uh, voltage out. Okay, so let's run you. DC. Okay, uh, so we can see that the circuit is working, 
but it's not it's not very informative of what's happening with the current. So how how would we have to measure the current? We'd have to put in a, a load uh, or a current sense resistor to try to understand uh, what's happening there. Okay, so a couple more things to go over. Uh, basically, uh, being able to print the graph is very useful. Uh, that's that's a great way to uh, output the data. So you can uh, simply maximize the graph and then you're going to double click on the banner and send it to your printer. Okay, so once we're uh, maximized and we run our simulation under file, uh, we can go to uh, print. Okay, and you'll notice that uh, it wants to print the uh, graph, not the entire design. And so we'll set it to landscape in color. And uh, we can change the printer from my physical printer to, uh, to a, a PDF, Microsoft print PDF. And so we want to uh, fit to page and say, okay. Here we go. So I'm going to just put it on my desktop and give it some logical name. And it's laid it over top of the uh, design, which is not necessarily what I wanted. So let's uh, try try again here. We'll uh, file uh, design. That's new. Print graph. There we go. Uh, so we want to print graph. Uh, color, fit to page, and uh, let's try this again. Again, give it some logical name. And here we go. Uh, again, unfortunately, we've got the yellow on here. I'm going to look at uh, how to change those colors. Uh, but quite frankly, it's it's okay as, as, our, uh, as our PDF. It, still readable okay and so we'll call that we'll call that uh sufficient so for your homework the other thing that i want you to do is to simulate your your instrumentation amplifier and i want you to uh create a uh another trace so here i'm going to add another trace and you'll notice that i'm able to do uh, do quite a bit with this uh, for example i could uh, bring in uh, probe probe one and probe two, uh, which we called. Let's see my let's look at uh, input power. So I'm going to say here. I'm going to add a trace. I'm going to call uh, probe one is my C one plus, and my current here is my uh, D seven. E7 cathode, and instead of P1 plus P2, I'm going to say P1 times P2, and I'll say OK. And so now this new one that's over here, which is blue, is actually my power. All right. So, a very powerful tool to add uh, more traces where we can calculate. Uh, in this case, power, but it could be something else. You could be looking at, well, the, the world's your oyster. All right. Uh, one thing that we can do uh, also is, uh, so instead of calling this, so right now this, we're going to call this power. And this time I'm going to make this in uh, milliwatts, okay? Uh, and the difference is that I'm going to take this expression and multiply it times a thousand. Okay, so you can actually you can actually change uh, change this expression. And that's one of the things that I want you to do for your homework. So what I want you to do for your homework is I want you to uh, simulate your instrumentation amplifier and what I want you to do is to change it from uh, 
units to um, milliunits. So I want you to multiply uh, the output voltage on your two inputs to millivolts. Okay, and so this will allow you to keep one scale uh, for for uh, for all of it. So all of it will be voltage, but millivolts versus uh, volts on the other side. All right, uh, just so that you get some experience. Obviously, the best way would be to uh, take your output and put it on the second scale on the right hand side and uh, let it, let it work itself out. But this is uh, this is the assignment. Let's go with that. As always, I I hope you're having some fun with this. That you're you're really seeing how powerful Proteus is, and uh, if you are falling behind. Uh, Remember that we're getting really, really close to the capstone project being due. Uh, so uh, reach out, contact me with any any comments or questions, uh, and particularly if you have any suggestions, uh, give give me an email so that I can create some more content to help you out. All right. Hope you hope you uh, get along well with this project, and as always, have fun. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye now.